Hi there, this is Christine Zibbs. We at Wired Schools are honored to bring you our Back to Schools 2020 What Parents Should Know series. This presentation features real parents stepping up to the mic with direct messages for school board members. They are sharing what they want to see improve within the government school system. Also, they are prepared to withdraw their children should their needs not be addressed in a timely fashion. I agree with all their points. In addition, I would like to say that what I view as the most important are that our children are being irradiated without their or their parents' consent by wireless devices inside and around classrooms. The exposure is cumulative and has been shown to have serious health impacts to children's brains, bodies, and future generations. Children are more vulnerable, absorbing up to 10 times the amount of radiation compared with adults. Additionally, many schools have had 5G installed during lockdown this year, and that also was done without consent. This harm has been supported by tens of thousands of peer-reviewed scientific published studies. You'll find related links in the comments section. As co-founder of Wired Schools Group, I received a notice from a mom who's asked their principal if 5G was in their elementary school. She received what seems to be the official narrative statement that was that they have it, but small chips are throughout the school and the radiation levels are very low. Knowing how this radiation works, I felt that they had managed to share the truth but present it in such a fashion apparently designed to appease parents unfamiliar with the health impacts of this technology. I reached out to 5G expert Lena Poo and shared this response. She said, well of course they are small chips. Millimeter wave are the smallest chips there are. So small you can have hundreds fit onto the size of a quarter but that doesn't mean they are innocuous, far from it. Size does matter when it comes to frequencies. Lena suggests asking for the specific upgrade details, the make and model of the new chips and their specific frequencies if inserted into existing wireless access points, also known as WAP units, also known as commercial industrial grade routers mounted above the children's heads in ceilings. We want to know all the frequencies that are being emitted out of these Wi-Fi units, including the new chip sets. And we want the engineering plans on these, make and model. This was shared with Lena's permission. Follows are the statements from other concerned parents. Thank you for your attention to their comments and for taking them seriously. We invite you to feel free to submit responses to their comments in the comments sections of the videos. And uh, I will make sure that these are relayed to, to the parents. Thank you very much for your consideration. Bye for now. My name is John. I'm from Jackson, Michigan. I'm a 64-year-old father of a 16-year-old boy. and um, my concern with this uh, sudden change, uh, I'm very concerned about the mandatory masking. I believe that that is an unproven medical therapy that should not be forced on our children for six hours a day. I'm very much against that. And I'm also against the very strong likelihood of a forced um, coronavirus vaccine if and when that should become available. And I, I really wish that school officials would pay attention to the wishes of we parents. Uh, we're taxpayers too, and we pay the bills for all this. And please, no more masks. Take the masks away and no forced vaccinations. They've had enough poking and prodding for, you know, the earlier part of their life. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Hello, my name is Noreen, and I'm from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Uh, the topic that I wanted to discuss was my concern with getting our children back to school in a normal atmosphere this fall. Um, my main concern I have with the new guidelines is sending our, our masks being required. 
According to the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, moisture retention, reuse of cloth masks, and pore filtration may result in an increased risk of infection. A contaminated cloth mask may transfer a pathogen from the mask to the bare hands of the wearer. Besides the fact that doctors are questioning how masks may be effective in stopping the spread of COVID, our children have already suffered enough mentally. Many parents do not have the option to homeschool and are put in a very sticky predicament with these mandates. Another one of my concerns is that masks will be mandated for children who suffer from learning disabilities or are on the spectrum. I am not quite sure how you can get a child who may be nonverbal or cannot comprehend simple tasks to actually keep a mask on. Schools should be more lenient with truancy, and if a child is not feeling well, people should be urged to keep their children home. Okay, hi, my name is Betty. I am a physical therapist and mother of four from Michigan. I'm also a health activist and advocate. In regards to the pandemic um, and the kids going back to school, I'm very concerned about the CDC guidelines. The mask mandates have not been proven um, to prevent uh, transmission, and actually um, there's increased risk of staph infections, um, reduced oxygen, increased CO2, headaches, dizziness, and all kinds of health issues. The death rate for the coronavirus is 0.26%, and that was prior to all the wonderful therapies that we have with, um, including hydroxychloroquine, high-dose vitamin therapies, IV vitamin C, um, nebulizing steroids, and a plethora of amazing um, treatment protocols that are being used very successfully, like 99.5 to 100% successfully around the world. I'm also very concerned about the potential vaccine mandate. Some companies are talking about the COVID vaccine being mandatory once it's available. This is a fast track coronavirus vaccine. I am also very concerned about the um, explosion of the EMF and RF uh, exposure due to Wi-Fi and 5G. And as far as the curriculum goes, the, um, the sexualization of the children and the changing of the history and kind of moving our children from conservative to more liberal values is very concerning. Thank you. Hi, I just wanted to add that I have two uh, students that will be at a university. And from what I understand, they will be required to be tested prior to going to school and traced and quarantined if anyone's sick. I understand that, you know, if any student gets sick, you know, that's fine to get tested, but uh, to be tested when you're perfectly healthy makes no sense to me. Um, however, the university guidelines now, um, originally they were going to do a hybrid of medium-sized classes and in-person um, small classes, and now most people are saying that their kids have all online classes. The freshmen are going to be stuck in their dorm rooms, a 12 by 12 room, doing online classes with their roommates. They won't be allowed to go to the communal areas of the dorm, and the libraries are going to be closed. So I feel like it's just a huge um, opportunity for the students to you know, end up with a lot of depression. Hi, my name is Kristen, and I have actually worked in the field of environmental and occupational toxicology and industrial hygiene for the past 18 years. Um, I have a daughter who's about to start kindergarten and another daughter who's going to be a junior in high school. I have several concerns, but my primary concern is as someone who is actually a subject matter expert on pathogen preve prevention, respiratory protection, and personal protective equipment, I am a little concerned at how these schools are getting their information, and it seems to be from physicians. While there's no disrespect to healthcare workers, it is people in my profession that actually provide the recommendations and training for PPE in a healthcare setting. Um, the idea that face masks should be used by all is not only a huge concern for me from seeing over the 18 years people actually pass out during fit tests and out in industrial and medical and administrative workplaces that have conducted health risk assessments. I've seen the impact that an improper usage of PPE can do to the human body, and I'm highly concerned about who is going to track all of the guidances that are coming out of different states. I should identify I am from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Here in our state, people are going to be required to use reusable masks and wash them every single day. We're not including the training involved in that, how you shouldn't be using fabric softener, how you shouldn't be using a dryer. I'm concerned that if you are mandating this, who's going to fund it? Also, if we're using disposable masks, how are we tracking the 2.5 hour limitation of surgical masks from being soiled? And at that point, it can impede proper gas gaseous exchanges. 
So I'm concerned with the guidance without consulting a multidisciplinary, a team of subject matter experts in personal protective equipment. Um, I know those of us in occupational safety and health have major concerns on this because everything that we are trained to do is not being showcased um, at the hand of these governments and school boards. So we have these mandates, but we're not using the proper multidisciplinary approach. Nothing is ever one size fits all, and we're not doing the training. And with any mandate involving no training in health physicals, it is very detrimental to human health, especially our youth. Thank you for your time. My name is Maya Hahn, and I'm from Michigan. I'm a parent of three school aged children. I am also a speech language pathologist and an autism specialist for over 20 years. And I have significant concerns about schools adopting and implementing non-scientific practices and requirements for our children. From the recent adoption to mandatory masking, which is very concerning when you read the science of potential health hazards that they can cause our kids and teachers, to concerns about the potential COVID vaccine mandates, a vaccine that has not gone through the proper safety trials, I'm also concerned about the ever-growing use of wireless devices in our schools. As a mother who has a child who is electromagnetic sensitive, it's getting harder and harder for my child to be educated without being exposed to wireless radiation, which gives her migraines. But my child isn't the only child affected by wireless radiation. All children are vulnerable to wireless radiation. It has now been confirmed to cause cancers, especially brain cancers, Pediatric cancers are on the fastest rising pediatric cancers in America. Wireless has been found to affect attention, learning, and cognition. So with the Wi-Fi routers in every classroom, kids having cell phones at schools, and, my, and some schools even having large wireless towers on their property, schools have become a toxic soup of radiation. With the ever-growing numbers of autism, ADD, ADHD, mood disorders, learning disorders, and health conditions in our kids, it's time that our American school districts become proactive in eliminating non-ionizing radiation exposures on our children that are being exposed at school. School districts who are continuing to invest and implement wireless technology into their schools are endangering students and staff's health and safety. It is time that schools begin to look for new and safer ways to implement technology. Wired schools are safe schools. Fiber lines are faster, safer, and more reliable. Hi there, my name is Janine Deal. I live in Michigan and I am founder of Michigan for Safe Technology. Wireless radio frequency microwave radiation technology in the classroom is not only a threat to the health of the children, it may also be detrimental to the learning process. Harmful effects from wireless technology have been known about since radios were actually first invented. And they include, as Maya mentioned, cancers, tumors, DNA damage also, diabetes and infertility, as well as headaches, anxiety, heart palpitations, and more. There are thousands of studies that prove these effects. Some children and adults experience symptoms almost immediately after installations of new wireless equipment though cancers and tumors can take several years to develop. A recent U.S. military study at West Point Academy backs up prior research that found students perform better when laptops and tablets were removed from the classroom. Ideally, each school will hire a building biologist or EMF specialist to help create a faster, safer, more secure, and more reliable internet experience using wired options. Please protect the children from this class 2B carcinogen. When there are safer options available, why not? Thank you. Hi, my name is Amber from Michigan, and I have five boys, four of which are in school, elementary, middle, and high school. And my big concerns are the mandates being put on the schools um, as they go back. Um, the mask thing is just, um, yeah, that's a problem in itself. <laughs> I guess if the schools enforce that, what are they going to enforce next? Um, vaccines, um, yeah, contact tracing, that is, those are things that I feel like really need to be looked at and um, researched more before they're so quick to follow governor's orders when they're not even law. 
Ladies and gentlemen, hi, my name is Amy, and I currently live in Colorado, the Aurora area. Um, I was personally homeschooled as a child, and I have also, now as a mom, have chosen to homeschool our five little boys. Um, my oldest is going into fourth grade, then I'll have a second grade and a kinder kindergartner this year. And we're choosing to homeschool for multiple reasons. First of all, I believe character is the number one thing that is a good foundation for a person, any person. Um, and, you know, looking at several different issues, some of my biggest concerns are medical with the public schools currently. You know, I, I believe that um, a child should be raised without fear. And when they're, they live in a constant state of fear, they become less productive as a person. And so mandating things such as masks or vaccines, um, I just see it as being very unhealthy. I think that is an individual's choice. I also, you know, watching several people in my family, there are people who are severely affected by vaccines in my personal family. And so it is a large concern of mine, and I don't think it should be mandated. You know, if a family wants to make that decision, they should be more than free to make that and um, one way or the other, and they shouldn't be judged for it. It shouldn't be discriminatory either way. Hi, I'm Dr. Marissa from Michigan. My main concerns with school this coming year and going forward is one, the masks and the social and psychological and uh, physical damage that they can do. If anyone um, has younger children, especially like middle schoolers, they want to do anything they can to fit in and introducing something new like that is just going to cause a bigger issue. And when we have higher bullying rates, that means increased psychological damage, which means that we could end up with higher suicide rates as well, which is a major concern of mine. Um, my other concerns are about health. Since I'm a doctor, health is very important to me. And all the research that I have done points to masks not being healthy for um, people all people, not just some people, all people, they're not healthy for us. Some may notice the negative effects earlier than others, but those are my two biggest concerns that I have about school this fall. My name is Virginia Farber and I live in Colorado and I am a frustrated, angry grandparent. Um, I'm angry because the school system, they are experimenting on our kids and they are making our kids um, guinea pigs for for everything that they're doing, all the curriculum. They're radiating our children with pulsed radiation, microwave radiation, the whole time they're at school and is now considered a, a, a toxin uh, via the NTP study, National Toxicology Program study from 2018, released in its entirety, a 30 million 10-year study by the U.S. federal government, which shows clear evidence of harm by wireless radiation. So it can now be classified as the same category as benzene or asbestos. That's how dangerous wireless radiation is now. And on top of it, our kids are being um, shifted around uh, because of this virus going around. And so they're learning at school, which they're exposed to Wi-Fi. And now the school system is requiring them to learn at school via their laptops with Wi-Fi. So now they are being exposed at home as well for this. And on top of it, now we have forced um, uh, back, um, vaccinations for kids. And this needs to stop. Our kids are getting 72 vaccinations um, from the time they start, uh, from the time they are born until they start school and throughout school. And every time they get a vaccination, this weakens their immune system. In Japan, for instance, they have uh, the lowest rate of vaccinations, but the, the most healthy uh, population, especially with children. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the schools have taken prayer out of the schools and they are replacing it and they, they're, they're taking the Pledge of Allegiance out of the schools. And they are uh, basically dumbing our kids down as far as American history is concerned. 
and they are replacing the curriculum with things such as outrageous CSE, Comprehensive Sexuality Education, and story time, queen time hours at the libraries, which needs to stop. Our kids do not need to be learning about uh, sexuality, and, and they are um, actually targeting, targeting kids at younger and younger ages, which is abs absolutely disgusting. Um, on top of it now, we've got Common Core, which is now dumbing down our kids, and it also inco includes uh, pornography and materials, sex ed, ed, ed materials, and you know, they just aren't learning uh, what they need to be learning. They're learning about the environment and there's um, much greater things that they need to be learning about right now. Common Core and the CSE, the Comprehensive Sexual Education um, uh, Curriculum, inclu including the Drag Queen Story Hour, um, are all part of the UN. And I want parents to understand that the UN is in control of many of our um, government systems right now. And the education system is a big part of it. And people just need to uh, study, research, and you will find out that a lot of this stuff is coming down from common, uh, from the common, the United Nations system that has now infiltrated the United States. And, and this is the stuff I want people to understand and we've got to take as parents we've got to take control of our kids and and if the schools don't change this we need to get our schools our kids out of the schools i lost a son in 2008 from wireless radiation at a school and i've also investigated other school cancer clusters which all were from wireless radiation in different forms and I, I want to put this out as a warning to parents that if the schools do not change, then we, it's time to homeschool your kids. Thank you.